Welcome traders, welcome back. I am Adam Harris, I'm a chief market analyst and trader. Uh, I am going to be having a look at the big news for the week and basically showing you how I'm going to be approaching this week, which markets to avoid, which markets I wanna focus on. Uh, and uh, again, obviously, if you have any questions or requests as to how I do this on a weekly basis, then, uh, or there's any instruments you would like me to include, please put it in the comment section. I'm usually about a week or two behind on the comment section, but for the most part, I'm trying to improve that. So let's kick off, let's have a look at the economic calendar. Mainly I'm gonna be focusing on the US dollar news because uh, that really provides me with a guide as to the biggest cog in the machine, in the system, in the economic machine, and what's going on with that. So the focus this week predominantly, Tuesday I'll be looking at CPI figures. Doesn't really matter which ones they are right now, I'm just gonna be looking at how they impact the market and how the difference between the actual and forecast, what that is. Obviously compared to previous, if there's any trends that are starting to show up. Now remember, you need a minimum of three consecutive declines or rises in any figure for that to be considered a trend. Okay, so you need that. So you need a minimum of three of those. Anyway, and now if we have a look, we've got on Wednesday, we'll have PPI data again, core retail sales. We've got other PPI data and retail sale figures coming out. And then Thursday, really, it's going to be unemployment claims. So actually, I figure, I'm not really, don't think anyone's going to be too concerned about the Wednesday figures. I think there'll be a bit more of a reaction on Thursday with the unemployment claims. We'll see how that goes. Uh, that's really where most of that attention is. And then just briefly, I'll be looking at anything that might impact sterling this week. So these are really the big, big, big moves this week that I would be expecting. There we go. That being said, let's go and have a look at the charts and see what's going on there. And starting here with the US uh, volatility, the uh, index, which is the VIX. All right, we've actually finished lower for the week so that volatility continues to drop. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing at this point in time. It's an indication that the market itself is inherently stable. And if there's a part of your brain going, yeah, but that's just what happens before a black swan event and there's definitely a black swan event due now, then you need to cut back on whichever social media channels you are following. Okay, black swan events, we'll never be able to see that, but the very fact that we think there's one around the corner is in itself a contradiction because you never really see them coming. Okay, so uh, it just really means that the market is not on edge at this point in time. All right, cool. If we're gonna have a look at the dollar index, so here we've got some interesting behavior. We uh, were due for a correction. We started that correction. We then broke up, breaking that downward trend. So we removed the downtrend. So there was an uptrend. We started a downtrend and we broke that. We, we were then potentially gonna go into an uptrend and instead we reverted back to this. So this is actually, what happens in this particular case is that the market creates a new high from the old high and it creates a new low from the new low. Okay, that is, you can only exist in one of two states in the markets, you're either trending up or, sorry, you're either trending or you're not trending. All right, so either trending or ranging. Um, and if you're trending, you're either trending up or down. In this particular case, the market is not trending up or down, which means it's ranging. So there's no clear direction for the dollar index at this point in time. However, I would point out that we produced a weekly bullish candle within the moving averages. We've got the 50, 20, and 10. This could be a setup for another run at that 106.50 level, All right? We might fail to get through it, but it is trying to potentially consider making a run at that. And therefore, I would definitely look for a break of the previous week's high. I'd be looking at 105.96 or 106, seeing if we do break through on that. But the market is now in a range. So the reason that is important is because the market has no clear direction and therefore it's capable of doing completely erratic things. So right now it could go down, it could go up, it could do anything, it's a 50-50 thing. Uh, whereas ordinarily, if we had a normal retracement, I would say, well, we're much more likely to go up than down. Right now, that's very iffy, but that's what I'll be looking for. Break of the high of last week's candle, uh, which if you move across and have a look at euro dollar, that would should be subsequently a break of the low if we do something similar. To me, this looks more bullish. This is a very nice bullish candle. It's actually a bullish engulfing candle. We broke the high of that. So although this is, although technically, excuse me, a 50, 20, and 10 in a bearish formation, and that is a small bearish indecision candle in the right area, which can be a signal of a move to the downside. When I look at the monthly, I see it within a range. So I have to weigh that up. I'm going, it's range bound, it's at the bottom of the range, it's got a lot, some bullish signals, and it's got a couple of, there's, there's, if you're going through the list of what are my reasons to go short, well, we've had a strong dollar lately, uh, and we've had a strong dollar not necessarily a weaker euro because we see the same movement on sterling. We see it across a lot of the other majors. So we know it's the dollar that was really driving this. We have a retracement, which is long overdue. And therefore is an argument. I'm playing both sides here. 
And therefore, there's an argument to continue to the downside. We've got the moving averages in that formation. We've got a small bearish indecision candle in the uh, 10 and 20 moving averages. Those are all in one column are all ticks for a move to the downside. Then we have, if we look at the daily, we've got a very nice uptrend here that has played out very luckily for me in terms of an example of how the market could play out pretty much as per the uh, line drawing that I put in a couple of weeks ago. We've pulled back to the previous highs and produced a bullish candle here. We've got here, we've got bullish signals on the daily. So we've got 50, 20 and 10. And we've got uh, a bullish little bullish candle here, which could provide a break and a retest could provide um, the basis for the next leg up to the upside. So we've got bullish setups on the daily MACD's above zero. We've got a potential bearish setup on the weekly within that picture. And then on the monthly, we've got range bound. So we've got, we've got all three range, uptrend, downtrend. So what do we do? Well, for now, the smartest thing to do most likely is to just monitor the high and the low of last week's candle as a starting point. If we break the low of this, that means that there could be momentum uh, where we could be returning to the downside here. If we break to the upside, that actually means that the bullishness at the bottom of this range with the potential to go to the top and the bullishness we see on the daily is winning out of the two. But expect, expect different behaviors now. There is no fixed trend with multiple higher time frame confirmations. We have a contradiction on all three time frames. Therefore, we have to be prepared to play it as it lies, which is a golf expression, which basically means Forget about everything else, you know, just follow the daily and see what it does. You, you understand that it could break to the upside and therefore that means it's going to pick up momentum to the upside. It could break to the downside, which means it'll then pick up momentum to the downside, or it could just stay in the middle. And so you play it as lies. It does kind of underscore that probably euro dollar for now is possibly not necessarily the best for swing trading opportunities just yet. Sterling, quite a big correction. I was looking for it to kind of pull back into, to be honest, I would have expected it to pull back into... Uh, let's go back down to about here, which is kind of what it has done. A little bit of a bullish indecision candle here. Big move to the downside, so we could see a reversal from here. We are still generally producing. We're in a channel, so we could move to the upside here. Again, just a mess on the weekly. All right, big move down. You can see it trying to find support, then a big push, and then a pullback. Uh, and actually, this is where it gets interesting. So if you're kind of not sure, again, we're almost in a bearish setup here. Almost. But also, if we measure the Fibonacci, and I don't want to keep this video, I don't want it to get too long. But if we measure the low of this candle to the high of this candle, we get pretty much a little bit of a, a 618 pullback. So you just swap those numbers, and we've got a little bit of a connection down to there. So that was not a back pullback. So actually, why I'm showing you this is that means there is the basis here for this to continue to the upside. Because we didn't really, we didn't retrace that much below the low of the previous week's candle. Candles overlap. So remember that. So again, for me, it's cautious. It's cautious, cautious, cautious. Aussie dollar, very big correction. Much more bearish than bullish. Definitely, again, to me, cautious. Just screams cautious. Okay, from this one, this would be a, a very deep retracement. That, to me, would imply weakness, which means there might be a move up, but we could hit these previous levels here at 64.34 and then resume to the downside. So possibly that's what's going to happen. We're going to see a bit of a move uh, in favor of a weaker US dollar and then finally see the weak close with a stronger US dollar. That's one possible uh, play here. We'll see. We've got Kiwi dollar, similar type of move, almost about a 50, just past a 50% retracement. We could continue up. This week was really not great. It would have been nice to see the market move down and then move up or move up and then move down. But instead it just moved down for a very, like it sort of did some, some movements and then continued down. It's an, this is not a usual type of behavior, which in itself adds to the picture of uncertainty. Now, when I say uncertainty, I just mean uncertainty for the next week. So remember when I do these analysis, it's really one week at a time. That's a much more realistic, practical approach to the markets. Deal with a thing one week at the time. It's not that you're ignoring possible trends, it's that you're not extrapolating the worst case scenario from one week's worth of data, which is a bad habit to get into. Dollar yen, no real surprises here because the behavior is continues to be erratic, right? It is ping-ponging and swinging wildly in this area. If you look at the swings in this area, overall, the moves are relatively big. It continues to push past that 150 line. So in other words, the policies and the traders and the money flow of money is still pretty much in line as it has been over the last 18 months. 
pretty much just continues to push dollar yen or the yen pairs to the upside. If we go ahead and have a look very quickly at the yen crosses, so we look at euro yen, you can see it's slipping to the upside. There's a nice little level of, uh, there's a beautiful breakout there to the upside. So that wants to go, it's just steady, 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 but we also know BOJ getting very twitchy with it. So it means we could trade it, but we have to accept that there is a possibility of intervention or just higher volatility and, and uh, lower probability. So here as well, you can see pound yen battling with resistance over there. Aussie yen battling with another level of resistance up here. Uh, we've got Kiwi yen will be very similar. So also battling with a level of resistance over there. And we have CAD yen. Pullback looks like it might continue. Here's where it gets interesting. Will it encounter another little brief area or battle in this area here? Um, so we'll see if that's going to be the case. Just want to bring, yeah, I'll bring it down. There we go. That's the level I want to watch, 110.22. And then Swissy Yen, which is generally much more stable. This is a beautiful break and a retest and a bullish setup and it's taken off again. But same thing, we have a problem. Okay, we have a problem in this area. So there we go. I would keep an eye on that this week. Overall, it just makes me very cautious. I can see the trend is in place. I can see it's there. I have a couple of options. Don't trade it at all. Demo trade it so I can still learn from the process. It's training. Remember, we get better as traders when we train through that. Or put 10 cents on the dollar to kind of trade it. So now that's 0.1% uh, on the trade and trade it with obviously a stop loss in place. Or alternatively, we go at full risk as per my strategy and my risk management plan but be prepared for the markets to change the behavior. Okay, let's go back to this. So you can just see my concerns with the yen pairs there. Then we have a look at gold. Gold continues to move low. We're back now in 1940. I'm very happy. That is a really good place for gold to be. It has been taking a long time to get there. I did have a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern that I was talking about over here, which is from this low up to this low. And then you would measure from the high here straight down to the neckline. Uh, it's a little bit more than that and then from where it broke you would kind of get back down to about here And remember this is an 83.04 percent probability of happening. That's high. Okay, so we're pretty much in that area Viv and I have been waiting for gold to move back to that. It's not science. It's not voodoo It's experience saying that we needed at least a retracement and the 1940 area level area was the closest best level for it to do a decent healthy retracement for back into these old highs even possibly touch on a little bit 1930 level but 1940 was a minimum requirement in my book and we finally got there and by the way there's I don't always see these in every single chart all the time this last since gold has been running lately 1940 has become a key level that's all I've observed I've picked it up so we can see a turnaround here is what I'm getting at might want to come down and tap a little bit lower but I'm looking for a bullish candle to form here in the next week and to see the four hour go into an uptrend and then I'll be looking that I'll be bullish on gold. Okay. That is, we can't see into the future, but if we could step into the future and price was going to, over the next month or two, go up towards break that 2000, 2050 level, what would it look like if we looked back to now, we would see that. So in a way, what I'm doing is I'm presenting myself in the future and then asking myself well, what I see in the charts. Excuse me for a second. All right, silver. <clears throat> yeah, we've broken through level support again. I'll be looking for it to find some. That's a momentum breakout. So that's a really nice break to this level. So yeah, there's still some, based off what I'm seeing here, there's still some appetite for a move to the, to the next level to tap it. So, excuse me. Um, but a break and a bullish candle finishing next week would be a bullish sign. I hope that makes sense as to why. Uh, let's move on to crude oils. We're going too long. It's going to be too long this video today. Beautiful. Downtrend, break of support, coming back to retest it so it's not a false breakout. How do we know that? Well, it's more than three candles already. We are coming up, but into this area, I'd like to see if we start to get, you see how we have these little wicks over here. If we start to produce at least three candles, potentially, or at least two candles, with wicks in either of these two levels, then there's the possibility of a break to the downside and a continuation. 
but we also in the area we're at if we move straight up and close above this level that was resistance we close back up above it we're then likely to continue to the upside so what does it mean from a practical perspective as a trader it means shorter term day trading opportunities i approach it up to this level then i see how it handles this level if it starts to fail at that level then i'm out i'm not trading anything anymore but if it does break through this there are some shorter term day trading lower time frame one minute five minute 15 minute trades up to this level and again exiting all my positions to see how the market responds at this level. And that's it. After that, you just see where we are by, that's probably gonna keep us busy for the next week. Be the same for Brent crude, no different there. There is, again, there's an argument here, ladies and gentlemen, for these markets to turn around in the next week, um, just as much as it is for them to continue. Let's move on to the MVPs, most valuable players. All right, so beautiful, very, very nice. Couldn't get through there, broke strong bullish candle closing to the upside which is ultimately that's not the candle i got but i'm okay with that emotionally i'll be all right uh that's a continuation it's not a strong continuation but it's a continuation candle and from a monthly perspective it's perfect it's perfect s p beautiful look okay honestly yep fine full transparency we're just tapping that downward that downward uh dash trend line uh, and we have broken above this, but we're now sitting at the next ultimate high. Generally speaking, this is beautiful. I mean, we're halfway through the month. Not exactly. It's the 11th. I'm recording this for the 13th. We're not. So we could, you know, a lot of things could happen between now and then. But we're looking good. We are looking very good. What's the high here? So the high of this monthly candle so far is 4355. And the high of this is 425. Oh wow, so we've already broken the high of this monthly candle. 430.5, I beg your pardon, 430.5, I did it the wrong way, 430.5, and oh wow, 435. Oh no, so we've broken the high, we've already created a swing on the monthly. So again, there's there's more ticking the boxes in the bullish, in the bullish uh, camp here. So let's pause and talk about this for a second. If we were to be at to have another big leg up or to, to, to resume the, the next bull run or the next bull leg. This is the kind of thing I would expect to see on it. Okay. Again, I've told you, I, I'll repeat it. You never get good news at the bottom of the markets. It's always at its most, most dire. So there's a very big lag between where the market is moving technically before the social media. Let's include all newspapers and, and, and kind of junkies that comment on it before they start to uh, contribute and, or, or concede that maybe the market is a little bit more bullish. You'll get that six to nine months later as new highs are broken and eventually they have to go, okay, we've broken two new highs, maybe the market's not in dire strait. Um, whereas technically, as a technical trader, you know exactly where that point is, right? You can see where it is. And we are forming a technical bullish setup. So all the guys who follow me, guys and girls, ladies included, and by the way, we need more female traders. We need more, okay? So feel encouraged, please. We need to diversify the gene pool, so to speak. When I say gene pool, that's a terrible choice of words. Um, but we need to diversify the talent pool um, to do it. Good Lord, I can't believe I said that. Um, but my point is, yeah, we, we, okay. So this is a great bullish technical setup and we should see the potential now to continue up is on the table. The question is, will the market be able to follow through on that? But it is one of those setups. Um, cool, I wanna add something here quickly. Okay, so I'm, I'm often referring to social media or media and saying it's bollocks and you need to ignore this negative stuff. And I, I'm going to start collecting these headlines. I'm going to start collecting the stuff because, for example, the one that I've got on screen here is just one of a billion variations of stuff that will come into your Twitter feed or your uh, any kind of other feed you get into your newsletters, into some kind of groups. And the problem is the stuff is generally, generally garbage. Like it's just ridiculously useless for traders. It interferes with it. It is a major contributor, 25 to 50% of the reason most traders lose money because they make trading decisions based on this because they believe in good faith that this is valuable information and that somehow they need to take action on it and it's useless. And let me just go through the recent the recent ones I've had. So this one was November 6th. Then there was another one that says Wednesday, September 27th. Stock grew bearish on the market, sees headwinds for any risk asset, doom and gloom. This one as well on Twitter, JP Morgan says this stock market rally is not sustainable. Now it's interesting 
because they're all JP Morgan. But this was the one I really found. This came into my Twitter feed and I was like, okay, this is exactly the kind of crap I'm talking about. Um, this, you need to be ignoring this stuff. Everybody does. Everybody needs to be ignoring this. It's rubbish. Okay, this is not... <clears throat> These guys are terrible at predicting where the market's going to go anyway. So their track record is just not great. And this kind of stuff is just fodder that is either clickbaity or stuff. You need to be ignoring this. Okay, really. You find once you start blocking the stuff out or once you start waiting in terms of waiting what or weighing what the market is doing, if it looks bullish and this is bear and these comments are bearish, you know this stuff is garbage. Okay, please, please, please for your sanity. Start, start excluding this type of stuff. You want good advice? Follow the, the, the successful, you know, Michael Burry, I'm absolutely a massive fan of. Ray Dalio, those types of guys. Warren Buffett. If Warren Buffett's not panicking, if he's not panicking, there's no reason to panic. He'll say if he's concerned about something or he'll watch something, but they should say there's a deadline. If we see this by such and such date, we're fine. Or if this gets worse, then we need to be concerned, more concerned. But this kind of stuff is just, just useless. Okay, so please, please dis discount it from your analysis. You will be so much happier as an individual and you'll be more in touch with what the market's actually doing. Okay, our rant is over. Let's carry on here. Markets are setting up. They look nice and bullish. NASDAQ. Boom, the Nasdaq's going to be up at, back at its old highs probably before the end of the month. Okay, nice and bullish. I'm looking for pullbacks. I didn't even get that. It's so bullish. It did a minor pullback and it's broken out. This is free and clear is another way of putting it. Okay, it's gone. Cool. Um, Russell 2000 is at the bottom of the range. Now this, I would prefer to see this turn around. But what should happen, what should happen if this is going to turn around is we will see a turn around from here and break this high. And if it breaks this high and all breaks those highs in the coming week, that's another very, very bullish sign. All right, now let's go to the, um, all right, so let's have a look at this one as well. So this is the FTSE, that's okay. Here's where we would get a really bullish sign. Okay, well, if that was a weekly candle, but if we get a green bullish candle this coming week, so I'm gonna put it there. So if we get that and we close above these highs, close above those highs, that's the open and we close up like that, we're pretty much, pretty much going to head up to the top of the range. And again, notice how I say we're not going to go to brand new highs. The first thing I'm going to deal with, the most likely, shorter term, up to the top of the range. Because when you're in a range, you don't count anything until you get out the range. So... Talking about what it's when it looks like it's going to break out the range, you don't really know that till it's right at the edge of the range. DAX. DAX is looking okay. I'm happy with this. It's done a beautiful retracement. The monthly looks good. Um, <clears throat> what I can do is say, look, if we break the high of last month's high, so now we're talking about October. So this is the high point of October. If in November we break the high, we've got a swing low. So that's a level you can watch. And if that happens, you're done. It's bullish. Looks good. So far, we had a beautiful pullback this week and it took off. ASX, trying to stay above that level of support. It's a bit of a battle here. So why do we have these battles? Well, we have both buyers and sellers in the market. And at this particular point, there are sellers who are making sell decisions based on this price action over here. Then you'll have people who are trading based off the monthly's price section doing this, and you'll have day traders. So in other words, there are people, both buyers and sellers, with different budgets and different types of money, buying and selling on each of the different time frames. That's how it goes. Um, and especially when there's periods of uncertainty. So you, you get points where the market produces a possible point here where it might want to go down because enough people have produced that result at, on the weekly, and they'll maybe make decisions based on that and add to it. But, and so you always have multiple time frames unfolding, but they're not always contradicting each other. Sometimes you've got the monthly, the weekly, and the daily all looking bullish. And that's fine. That's when most people are agreeing they're on the right side of stuff. And again, another thought that comes in, a toxic thought is to go, the second everyone's on the same side of stuff is to start going the other way. No. Bad, 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 bad idea. There's usually a period where having everyone on the same side of stuff is the best, safest money-making opportunities you can have. Once that starts to become exhausted, you will see it in the price action and then you can stop engaging in that market. But to immediately take an opposite position is suicidal. 
financial suicide with respect to um, with respect to the topic of that. What's wrong with me today? Sorry. Okay, so we've got a double bottom here. We've gapped up. We look nice and now we've broken above these. The Nikkei looking bu bullish. Look at that monthly. Beautiful swing low that's formed over there. We've got Apple. Beautiful. Bullish. What else do you need to see? We need pullbacks. Continuation. Amazon. Beautiful. Break. Retest. Bullish candle. It's got the, that level. It's not a danger zone level. It's a weekly resistance level. It's got to get through that. Looks good. AT&T. In a range. At the top of the range. Can it break out? Let's find out this coming week. Tune in. All right. Also, great comeback. Great sort of recovery off that level. Let's see what happens here. We've got to break upwards again. I want to see us get back up to the top of that level for uh, ARC. Glencore still in the range. No big difference there. I'd ignore it for now. Uh, you can see Tesco's really battling in this area. What what possibly is going to happen here is a, is a, is a bearish momentum candle could happen. Something like this. Um, that could happen soon. And we'll see. If that happens, we'll get a deeper correction. But until that time, let's just see what happens. Amex. Very good reversal at this point in time. I'm happy with that. Berkshire Hathaway is fine. That looks good. It's just going to keep going. How's Coca-Cola doing? So Coca-Cola has been in a bit of a battle. And again, you can see downtrend, pull back into the moving averages. We've got basically a double top here, a bit of a wick that's happening there and an indecision candle. So yes, if we had very bearish sentiment, we would actually get a continuation to the downside here. And then you look at the monthly and you've got a strong bullish wick that happened here. So we've got a contradiction between these two time frames. So what do we do? Well, let's kind of look at the high and the low of this previous weekly candle, because definitely if we break the low of that, we're probably going to continue down a bit. If we break the high that, we're almost certainly going to carry on back up to these levels. So that's the easiest way to deal with indecision. BP having that correction to the downside, but overall it can still be bullish here. And if it resumes from this, in other words, we see it go back up from here to that, it could be building, it could be leading to a breakout to the upside. Exxon, still within a range, doesn't matter, get to the bottom, probably turn around. General Motors continuing down, but General Motors is also slowing down here. You can see this low and this low, we get some bullish divergence which means we could see a bit of a reversal in the coming week. Okay, we're seeing bullish, we're seeing buyers entering in, the brakes are coming on there, so we're going to see that turn around soon. JP Morgan Chase, really nice and bullish, looks good, very nice. Uh, Adidas, okay, so this needs a breakout to the upside, if either, either one up or down, but it's going to need that. So it either needs a bullish candle that does this, or it's going to need a bearish candle to just capitulate to move it back down to here. I think we've got a fair chance of the one happening. Meta, looks like that's going on anyway, fine, Morgan Stanley, similar situation to what we saw, but it's trying to turn around, so it's got its first bullish, inside bullish candle here, it might want to move up this week, in videos, looks like it's on its way, it's range, I kind of want to argue it's still range bound, I still don't, I still feel, I stand by my assessment that this needed to have a correction down here, but I will say this, when it stock, not a currency, when a stock or an index is trending really well, it doesn't always connect with the 10 period moving average. It does this, it's close to it, close but no cigar, and that's what it's doing here. So this could be ready to keep going. I'm gonna add in ASMR, sorry, I'm gonna add in um, a stock quickly, give me a second. Okay, so ASML, uh, I really like the look of this one. I've added this one in, beautiful. Uh, who are they? I think it's really worth your while to look them up yourself, do the, do the exercise yourself, but effectively they manufacture machines that can produce semiconductors. Um, and so they produce machines that companies such as Apple and Nvidia use. So I quite like that because they become, they are then, a, an, you could argue that they're a fundamental cog in the overall global technology industry. They look good. Okay, uh, I was on a video, looks fine. Netflix continues to push up. Netflix is doing okay, that's fine. It's continuing up. It's gonna have a bit of a battle in this area, which is you know somewhere in the area of 400. PayPal, dude, I can't help you, man. You guys have gotta pull yourselves up by your bootstrap. Spotify continues to push higher. Look at this, the weekly. Usually I'll look at the weekly. So every, when you're watching me go through stuff, I look at the weekly first. The daily can be inconsequential because we're looking at this from a weekly basis to a weekly basis. But if I look at the daily, it gives me additional information. So now, for example, I can see it failed here, tried again there, but pull back and produce the bullish candle here. That's very bullish. That means this is attempting to build up to breakout. 
So it gives me more granular information when I look down, when I zoom in, but there's a respectable level there that we need to keep an eye on. From a monthly perspective, it looks okay. Then we have the spider, which is battling definitely at the bottom here. Overall, this is really not performing uh, very well. This is biotech. It's a biotech ETF. I actually think I should remove this from the watch list. I'm not seeing it add value. Not seeing it add value. But I'll tell you what, I will keep it in for now because if we start climbing up from here, then surely if one of the weaker ETFs is starting to go bullish, then surely we're in a bull market. So we'll keep something that's relatively weak to see how that does. FedEx looks like it's taken another run back up at the highs. Look at it from a monthly perspective, bullish inside candle with a strong level of resistance at 267, we'll see. Tesla. Okay, so Tesla this week, no wow. So I'm only mentioning this because if Tesla was truly a bulletproof magical company, then its performance would have been outstanding in comparison to the rest of the market. True? If we're going to use that logic, if we're going to go that Elon Musk is superhuman, super intelligent, knows everything in the company is, is bulletproof, then surely the stock would have outperformed others over the last 18 months. And the fact of the matter is, it hasn't. That's just, that's the charts. Don't take it from me, but it hasn't. On the other hand, if we take a more rational, logical approach that it's a good company and its performance would be in the top 10 good companies or something over the last 18 months, then its performance matches this, more or less. Okay. So I'm not trying to create an argument here. I'm saying the problem is that we can sometimes... Warren Buffett and I stand by this said there are two things that impact a company's stock price. One is the actual productivity of the company, its assets and liabilities, how much profit it's making, its costs, its overheads, all those things on a spreadsheet that even if it wasn't listed on a stock exchange, if you weren't able to buy shares in it, would get a sense of the value of that company, even if people don't know it exists. And the second one is the public's perception of the value of that brand. And if Tesla, if you go back to 2021, 2020, January 2020, everybody knew who Tesla was, everybody knew who Elon Musk was, and nobody cared. They still knew it. Then they got in and there was a big move, and everyone's like, oh my God, this is amazing. But it's no different from Bitcoin. Bitcoin had a similar type of bubble that built up from it. When we look at it now, it's still operating at roughly its 50% from its all-time highs, which is not what you would expect from something that is apparently the solution to all our problems on the planet. That's all I'm saying. I'm just trying to like, let's just kind of take a little bit of a sort of a more perspective on it. Okay. The company has its own challenges, meaning it has more competition in Europe. It is way down the list of preferred vehicles. Volkswagen outsells Tesla by miles. Now, there could be practical reasons for it. Tesla focuses on America first, then it goes to Europe, then it goes to the UK. So there could be all kinds of explanations for it. Absolutely. I'm just saying that from a technical perspective, I'm watching it. I would expect it to go up from here. I like the fact that we have bullish candles going up from here. Therefore, it's got a fair chance if this closes as a green candle in November and everything else, we are expecting it to climb. I would say that if it continues to drop while other vehicle manufacturers and other companies are all climbing, in other words, a rising tide lifts all boats, but let's just say, for example, Tesla's getting left behind, I'd want to know why. I'd want to see what's going on there. Okay, so I understand that was a potentially sensitive topic, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We should be able to talk about this stuff. Okay, Vanguard. Looks good. I like that. It's got a swing low. looks nice and bullish. looks really good. Walt Disney. Well, Disney's desperately trying to turn around. That's had a very good, I would say it's had actually had a really good quarter. So it's got some potential. Really for Disney, if you can break back up above 95, you then have a much better kind of, then you've got a, then the outlook for 2024 is much better. And let's quickly run through uh, bonds. Um, that's trying to turn around. You can see that. Look at the bullish MACD. Look at it trying to break up above zero. They're starting to get there, but we're still technically in a beautiful downtrend with a bearish inside candle, which is historically a bearish setup. So this, there's not enough history here to see this. You can see where it's trying to turn around, but there's not enough of that yet. I do, again, think if this is a swing low, we could head up to here. But whether that changes the overall trend is too soon to tell. Again, better to do it week by week, month by month. 
Euro burnt will be a similar type of thing. Okay, this is just where we are. It's where we've been going back to 2022, almost two years ago. So not get obsessed about that. Cryptos. So yeah, I was looking for uh, Bitcoin to have a correction down here. It hasn't had it. It's continued to push up. It looks fine on this perspective uh, and continues to push up for me. I really would have liked it to do that. I stand by the fact that there could still be, if it's a normal, again, if we're not going back into another bubble, that we will see a pullback down and towards that 30,000 level. It's fine. When it happens, I'll bring it up. So I've put up a line here. If it starts to breach that, that'll probably be it coming to head down. But otherwise, it maintains its bullishness and Ethereum is looking very bullish. It's had a fantastic week. Again, you can see it here starting to do a bit of a retracement. Um, again, here, I'd love to see it's bumped its head up here. So I'm going to add that level in, uh, huh? And then let's just see what happens with it. But yeah, they look good from a monthly perspective. They are looking the best they have looked uh, for a while. Okay. Especially here, guys, if we break this high, we have a, a fresh high on the monthly. So where we are right now is kind of significant because you could see that continue up from, from that. That looks good. The rest, we don't really need to worry about. They'll follow through. So Solana, Cardano. Uh, all of these will continue to push on that. But they're all looking good. In fact, they are honestly are behaving way more bullishly than they have been uh, for the last 18 months. So I'm, I'm very happy to see it. I'm going to, I've been chewing your ear off enough. I've probably offended a whole lot of people at several points in the video. And I apologize. That was not my intention. Um, the only thing I really get upset about is, is letting the media stuff influence your opinion, your sentiment on the market. That's the only stuff I really get upset about. All the other stuff I want, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But yes, uh, my goal here is to make sure that we approach trading with a, a logical, balanced approach, which then influences our risk management because we accept that the market could go against us or could go in our favor. And also, we're not blind to seeing it. If something's not going our way, we need to be able to go, oh, that's not going my way. And you can only do that, ironically, by letting go of stuff. It's a very kind of Buddhist Zen kind of thing. You have to become detached. Even if your money is on the line and your ego is on the line, you have to become detached and go, looks like I'm wrong. But there always has to be a price or a level or price action signal that supports that. Okay. Um, all right. Ladies and gents, have an amazing week. It does appear, touch wood, that we are potentially at the bottom, at least of the next bullish leg up. And I want all of you to have a fantastic week. Manage your risk. Any questions, comments, please put them into the comment section below. Thank you.